In the last video, I said that a general state of the qubit can be expressed as a linear combination of the basis vectors 0 and 1. But what happens when we actually observe the qubit, when we make a measurement on it? Surely we can't observe the qubit to be in both of its distinguishable states at the same time. And quantum mechanics actually agrees here. It says if you observe the qubit, it has to pick one of its two states. It can't be in a combination of the two at the same time. We say that the state vector of the qubit collapses to zero or one upon measurement. Prior to measurement, the state vector of the qubit can be a linear combination of the basis vectors zero and one. And this is called a superposition. But upon measurement, the state vector collapses to either zero and one, which are both called classical states because they're two states that we can actually observe the qubit to be in. And this is really bizarre. In the video on quantum mechanics, I said that the state vector of a system evolves according to the Schrodinger equation. And this is true except when you make a measurement. When you make a measurement, the state vector instantaneously collapses to one of the basis vectors and no longer obeys the Schrodinger equation. And this is at the heart of many of the weird things of quantum mechanics and one of the reasons why different interpretations of quantum mechanics exist. Why does an observer have a special role in quantum mechanics? What constitutes an observer? What constitutes measurement? Um, these are really interesting questions that we're not going to get into. Um, you can read more about interpretations of quantum mechanics if it's something that sounds interesting to you. Most of this has more to do with the philosophy of quantum mechanics than with the actual formalism itself. Anyway, when the state vector of the qubit collapses, it doesn't do so arbitrarily. It collapses to the basis vector zero with probability equal to the complex conjugate of A times A. And likewise, it collapses to the basis vector one with probability equal to the complex conjugate of B times B. And this allows us to understand the normalization condition on the state vector. So the inner product of the state vector with itself is equal to the complex conjugate of A times A plus the complex conjugate of B times B. And we just said that this is actually the sum of the probabilities of the state vector collapsing to zero and collapsing to one. And since these are the only two possibilities, these probabilities have to sum to one. So this is why the state vector has to be normalized. And that's really all you need to understand about measuring a qubit. But it puts us in a position to somewhat understand the famous Heisenberg uncertainty principle. So I wanna talk about that for the rest of this video. So in quantum mechanics, every measurement you make on a system has a different basis associated with it. So, so far we're just talking about measuring this one property of a system um, because that's, that's all we're interested in in quantum computing. Um, but for different systems, there may be different things you're interested in measuring. So famously, these two properties are the position and the momentum of some particle. And since these are two different measurements, they have two different bases associated with them. And depending on which measurement you make, you collapse to a different set of basis vectors. So if you measure the position of the particle, you're going to collapse its state function to one of the basis vectors associated with that measurement. And if you measure the momentum of the particle, you're going to collapse the state vector to one of the basis vectors associated with that measurement. To illustrate, let's 
just pretend that these basis vectors 0 and 1 are the two basis vectors associated with some position measurement on our qubit. And let's also pretend that there's some other measurement we can make on the qubit. We'll call it a momentum measurement. And the basis vectors associated with this measurement are A and B. And because all of these vectors, 0, 1, A, and B, lie in the same vector space, A can be expressed as a linear combination of 0 and 1. And likewise, B can be expressed as a linear combination of 0 and 1, and the other way around as well. So let's say that A is equal to 1 over the square root of 2 times 0 plus 1. And the 1 over square root 2 is there just to enforce this normalization condition. And let's say b is equal to 1 over the square root of 2 times 0 minus 1. And of course, we don't actually get to pick what these basis vectors are. Each measurement has a fixed set of basis vectors associated with it. So if we make a momentum measurement, we collapse the state vector of the qubit to either A or B. And when we do this, the state vector is guaranteed to be in a superposition of the basis vectors 0 and 1. And this kind of means that it doesn't have a definite position, because a, a definite position would be represented by the state vector 0 or the state vector 1. Those are the two classical states. So basically, when this qubit has a definite momentum, that is, it's either in the state A or the state B, it doesn't have a definite position because being in one of the classical momentum states implies that you're in a superposition position state. And the same is also true when you make a position measurement. So the basis vector 0 is equal to 1 over the square root of 2 A plus B and the basis vector 1 is equal to 1 over the square root of 2 a minus b. So in this case, if we measure the position of the qubit, we're going to collapse the state vector into either the basis vector 0 or 1. These are the two classical states. But now this means that we're in a superposition of the momentum states. We no longer have a definite momentum. We're not in one of the classical momentum states. This is roughly what the Heisenberg uncertainty principle says. That when you have two different measurements and the basis associated with one of the measurements is different than the basis associated with the other measurement, it says that when you make one of these measurements, and hence collapse the state vector into one of the classical states of that measurement, you will be in a superposition of the classical states of the other measurement because the basis vectors associated with these two measurements are different. So it's impossible to be in a classical state of both of these measurements simultaneously, i.e., if you know the position of a particle, you can't know its momentum and vice versa is how it's um, popularly phrased.